So a long time ago, one morning I had a um, lucid dream. I was in the water with the whales. Um, well, I was a whale as well. And again, it was one of those, yeah, really magical, beautiful dreams. And at the end of it, right before I woke up, at the bottom of my, um, well, it was on, on the side, you know, and the, there are the indents at the bottom of the spine to the left and the right. There are the two indents there. And that's where the Kundalini energy, um, or, well, where it like lives or the base of it, the base of it, because it, it comes, it's a snake energy. It, when it's a snake, it's, um, it's in the red zone. <laughs> it's in the um, first chakra and this is an energy and what I felt was literally a small snake uncurling right there where one of the indents is and tickling you know and it was alive it had a life of its own and that was it I only experienced it once and it was just for maybe three seconds but it unleashed and emitted a very very blissful wonderful feeling and that's when I knew why the ancient Vedics called it the curled snake at the bottom of the spine or the two curled snakes and this is the Ida and the Pingala and the Ida is the male and the Pingala the female energy currents and these are the dragon lines the ley lines, the dragon lines, the kundalini lines of earth and the kundalini energy in the body. And the shishumna is the neutral energy in the middle There we have the holy trinity. So that's the polarity. And also the solar dragons are the 12th dimensional aspects of the Godhead of, uh, of this universe. And they are also always in polarity, male, female. And these are also energy currents. These are the Christed energy currents that we are now that we've come back into the ascension cycle from going down as low as we could, um, possibly could. Um, <laughs> mm. It's beautiful, so many birds. Very beautiful. And now back in the ascension cycle, we now are coming at the same time back into alignment. That's 14, code 14 again in, in the code that came th is coming through me. Uh, the sword, it's, it's Archangel Michael's sword and it's also um, Excalibur, uh, King Arthur's sword. And the sword is w when you hold it up like this and this is what they do you know they hold the sword like this like up in front of them um, and it's exactly the spinal column and then these two you know where the seat bone is where where it curls where the kundalini energy curls uh, so what did i say oh we're coming back because the earth was was lopsided and um, yeah, that's a whole other story. I will relay that in the code. And so it was, it wasn't able to like, you know, it's a, it's a sacred geometry. It's like clockwork, except it's organic. It's, um, it's an anatomy, you know, and if it doesn't align correctly, just like posture, then the energy currents, they can't really flow. And this is how uh, they were able to also then siphon it off you know siphon the energy uh, off and this was how it was possible also for the earth then to have this experience in this density and fall so low yeah so we have the the two currents the two channels masculine feminine which is also the holy matrimony and uh, the holy polarity um, 
then I was saying that the star tetrahedron, which also represents the female tetrahedron, which is with the tip down and the base up, and the male tetrahedron is the tip up, makes sense, and the base down, yes, the, yes, the width down. And they, uh, when they are in holy matrimony, when they are in balance, that is also the left and the right hemispheres of the brain, they are in balance, that is this alignment. Then uh, we have the star tetrahedron and that is the Merkaba. Um, Merkaba vehicle. At the same time, what has been coming through in the code, what what I've been shown, but uh, others are seeing this as well, is that um, as we are coming into, it begins as of, uh, that's what I said before, uh, it begins as a fourth density that we start to tap into our twin oversoul and with when the um, when that is embodied when that consciousness of the full consciousness that of ourselves that is crowned king and queen of my own land you know dominion of of this individual soul um, expression in density uh, and when my consciousness is also aware of myself as my twin soul there uh, that is of course an expansion of consciousness and with every expansion of consciousness there is new higher dimensional um, higher frequency light body anatomy that gets turned on that becomes active before it's it's in it's just inactive and uh, when that happens, then the star tetrahedron, which is made out of two tetrahedrons, male, female, they merge as one into a an octahedron. And I actually um, tried this out. You can actually make with the, with the same like if you have a if you have um, yes, if you have two tetrahedrons, you can make. The, an octahedron out of the two tetrahedrons. So it just shifts into that higher geometry. It brings us back to Australia, which is the root chakra of the world, and the snake energy. And it also brings us to the serpent bloodlines. You see the kings and queens, and uh, when you see snakes on their heads, or also. Uh, uh, in, in the mask of Tut Ankamun, but there's also uh, there's also a hat that Akhenaten is wearing, and it's with, with many of them, with many of the ancient Egyptian pharaohs, deities. You see the snake coming out of the third eye, the cobra. This is also with Lord Shiva, the Vedic deity. How come they're painted these? Uh, these people from the medieval ages or so, why do they have snakes on their head and so forth? This is the serpent bloodline, I will get into that. And uh, it's the serpent energy, which has been known to be in the um, alchemical wisdom, the transcendental consciousness. Because it transcends our consciousness it makes it that means it makes it clear that means that we can clearly know we come into ever clearer knowing of self and of course because that is not a limited to the individual soul it is an ongoing you know Taurus by Taurus aura by aura consciousness um, entity, so oversoul by oversoul aspect, aspect by aspect, um, expansion. So this serpent bloodline was uh, is understood to be the bloodline of the initiates into the Kundalini energy. So into transcendental consciousness, how to raise that 
consciousness from the base of the spine, from the first root chakra, into the crown. And this is, of course, this is also an initiation, and this is a, a many, many steps. There's as the Kundalini rises, it rises it's like the Christ oil through all the vertebrae of the spine, and this is 33 vertebrae. And this is all the initiation schools also, the different initiation schools, I'm not saying that there are 33, but it has to do with, you know, also going through the chakras, then the main points, you know, always rising, rising. Okay, now I did that, uh, I got that lesson, now I'm, I've earned you know, I can go through the next gate, you know, into the next level. It's like a school where you, each year, you, um, you ascend and you build upon the knowing and the knowledge. But this is not a mental knowledge, just mental knowledge. This is experiential and these are initiates. So, for example, uh, Uther Pendragon and, and his sons, King Arthur. Um, yeah, their name was Pendragon. Pendragon means the mighty dragon, the biggest dragon. And uh, it's because they were also called the dragon bloodlines. And this had to do with the people that were able to raise the Kundalini consciousness, consciously, who were initiated. <laughs> 